And this is a final example of how to deal with a system of linear inequalities. Here there are three inequalities. Let's label them. Number one, number two, and number three. The solution to all these at the same time will be some region on the uh, xy plane. So let's graph an xy plane. There's your y-axis, there's your x-axis, and somewhere on this region uh, the solution will will exhibit itself when we solve this problem. Uh, the first thing you want to do is graph the uh, equivalent equations to each one of those. So for inequality number one, we write the equivalent equation y equals minus x plus 2. For inequality number two, we're going to graph y equals 2x plus 1. And for inequality number three, we're going to graph y equals x minus 4. The reason why we do that is to find the boundary of each of the regions associated with these three inequalities. So in other words, for inequality number 1, we're going to have two regions on the xy plane. One will satisfy and one will not satisfy the inequality. We'll do the same for number 2 and the same for number 3. So let's graph those lines. The first line, y equals minus x plus 2. Remember, this is part of the, the uh, form y equals mx plus b, the slope-intercept form. In this case, 2 is the intercept and minus 1 is the slope. To keep things um, easier to follow, let's go ahead and draw this line in blue. The intercept is plus 2, 1, 2, right there, and the slope is a minus 1. That means you drop 1, run one, drop one, run one, and so forth, kind of a 45 degree angle. Notice that there's an equal sign there as well as a less than sign. That means the boundary is part of the solution, so we draw a solid line. So this is the boundary for the region that satisfies the first inequality. Let's grab a different color. Okay, now we uh, look at y equals 2x plus 1. The intercept is plus 1, right here. And the slope is a positive 2. That means you rise 2 and run 1. Rise 2 and run 1. Connect those three dots, and you have a new line. Here you can see that there's no equal sign, meaning that the boundary does not, is not included in the solution, so we want to draw a dashed line. Like so. So this is the boundary for inequality number two. And now, oop, let me uh, go ahead and color. There we go. Now for line number three, we'll use red. The intercept is minus four. One, two, three, four, minus four right there. And the slope is a positive one. Means we rise one, run one, rise one, run one, rise one, run one, like so. And also here we can see there's no equal sign. That means the boundary is not part of the solution. So we draw a dashed line. And let me extend this line out a little bit more. Like so. And I notice by having drawn those three boundaries, I have a whole slew of regions on this xy plane. Let's label them. Have the region that's entirely enclosed by all three lines, so let's call that region 1. Out here, this region right here is region 2. Here is region 3. Here is region 4. There is region 5. Here is region 6. And there is region 7. I guess I went from Roman numerals to normal numbers, but that way you can see the various regions. To find which of those regions, and it's probably only one of those, uh, satisfies all three inequalities at the same time, you have to then take each inequality, plug in a test point, and see if that test point lies in a region that satisfies each of the inequalities. So let's try line number one first. Line number one here separates this part of the xy plane from this part of the xy plane. So we'll pick this point right here, the point 0, 0, which lies below the line, 0, 0, and plug that into the inequality. We get 0 is less than or equal to minus 0 plus 2, question mark. Of course, we don't know if that's correct. We need to figure it out. 
zero is less than or equal to zero plus two or two question mark and the answer is yes zero is indeed less than two which means that zero zero lies in the um, solution the region that satisfies the first inequality so let's go ahead and draw lines indicating that this is the correct region that satisfies the first inequality. Okay, let's try the second line. The second line is the um, green line right here. And it looks like 0, 0 right, lies just to the right of that line. So let's plug in 0, 0. Here's my inequality. 0 greater than 2 times 0 plus 1 question mark. And 0 greater than that 0 plus 1, 1 question mark. And the answer here is no. It does not. Which means I picked a point that does not lie in the region that satisfies the inequality. The second inequality right there. Which means this side is not the solution. This side is the solution. So I can go ahead and indicate that by shading this region, the other side of where I can find 0, 0. There we go. Now I go to my third inequality and let me write the number 3 here. That's the third line. You can see that the point 0, 0 lies to the left of that line. Plugging that into my third inequality and let me use red so you can see it. So we have 0 is less than 0 minus 4 question mark or 0 is less than minus 4 question mark and that is not the case minus 4 is smaller than 0 so the answer is no which means that the point 0 0 does not lie in the region that satisfies the third inequality the region is on this side that means I have to shade this side of the line And let me continue those blue lines a little bit further because I don't think I went far enough. And I think you're beginning to see that the only region where all three colors are shaded, the blue shaded this way, the red is shaded this way, the green is shaded on that side. So this region right here, and coming down this way, this region right here, and let me then also double shade it this way, is the region that satisfies all three inequalities at the same time, and that region that represents the solution to this system of inequalities. Okay, I hope this helps you understand how to work with these types of inequalities, and go ahead and try some of your own now. And if you need to, come back and take another look and see how these are done. All right, good luck.